Welcome to Industrial Problem Solving. My name is Captain Jean-Luc Picard. This is a continuation of a mini-series on troubleshooting web manufacturing and converting issues using the best practices of traceability. Please see the six earlier clips if you have not already done so. Here we talk about the risks of roll damage during handling and transport. Have you ever noticed that rolls returned by your customer look nothing like what they were when you shipped them? This is even after you account for the time-dependent behavior that we covered in the last clip. The star coordinates for this clip are Web 401.21F. There were two early and important studies of handling and transport damage. They both arose out of the paper industry, which at the time was the oldest, largest, and arguably most proficient of the web handling industries. The Tappy Finishing and Converting Division, which I was active in for about two decades, had a shipping and warehouse committee. One of its mandates, was to study costly roll damage claims by their customers. While there were many sources, one of the worst was forklift trucks, which we will have more to say about shortly. Another was rail transportation, specifically the humping of train cars in the switchyard. If the train operator was not careful and backed into the rail car too quickly, the acceleration forces that resulted during the impact could be equivalent to dropping the roll from a couple of feet of height, which could cause out-around rolls, crushed cores, and starring. This led to new practices of dunnage, such as padding the periphery with inflatable pads. This, in turn, led to a notable reduction in claims from that source. So, how did they figure out where the damage was coming from? Much of this detective work was based on putting accelerometers on the insides of the cores. These track vibration and, more importantly, shock from impacts, much like a seismograph will monitor earthquakes. Another major early series of studies was by Ken Fry of the Winder Department of the Beloit Corporation. He went to many paper printing press customers to study what issues they had that might be related to winding. In addition to winding defects such as bagginess, corrugation, starring, and the other usual suspects, they complained about handling damage. By using simple observation, which we will cover shortly, he discovered that damage was coming from just about any equipment that touched a wound roll. Clamp trucks were causing lots of roll damage in the paper industry, including putting rolls out around, crush cores, and starring. We would always start with winding tightness. In the case of core crush specifically, you would wind either looser or tighter depending on whether you have a type 1 or type 3 core crush. If you are not familiar with the types of core crush, you need to go to school. Might I suggest my award-winning and trademark Web 101 short course that has been taken by 5,000 students. After you have changed winding tightness as far as it can go, and if you still have core crush, then you will need to redesign the core. Again, a subject we cover in great detail in my school. Still, the clamp truck is central to this problem and also needs to be considered. Most clamps have only two pressure settings. Of course, we would expect that the operator would almost always use the high pressure setting because a roll once slipped and they got chewed out for it, 
and they are not going to let that happen again. There are what are generically called intelligent or smart clamps that sense micro-slipping and put only enough load on the roll to prevent further slipping. It learns for each roll it picks up what load is just enough. You can search the Roysom Library database to find articles on this intelligent clamp or any other web handling subject. Roll wobble complaints are quite common with customers. Often it is their own equipment that is bent or loose. Sometimes it is your rolls that are out around. In our web school, we teach how to diagnose the contributions of each component using a simple dial indicator. This clip has given you a small sample of just some of the ways that your rolls can be damaged in handling and transport. There are many, many other ways. We have also given you some analytical tools to help diagnose cause and effect. However, a good place to start, almost always the best place to start, is by paying attention to the wound rolls. Carefully look at the bilge. You should see nothing. If you see something, sketch or photograph each feature and note its position. Carefully look at both ends. You should see nothing. If you see something, sketch or photograph each feature and note its position. How to inspect webs and rolls will be the subject of the next mini-series. Please stay tuned and subscribe to the All Web Handling channel on YouTube to make sure that you don't miss a thing. Your professional advancement, your company's profit, and your customer's satisfaction may all depend on it. Thank you so very much for joining me in this problem solving and problem preventing series based on best practices of traceability. Let me know what subjects you would like to hear about. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. Patreons are given special thank you gifts ranging from email help to a signed copy of my latest book, the must-have 500-page Web Handling Handbook. See you next time.